we really have two ways that we're applying the test. One is if we have a bacterial isolate, for example, let's say that you're a patient and you have a positive blood culture, and your positive blood culture reveals a bacterium like E. coli, and your E. coli happens to be a multi-drug resistant E. coli that is resistant to a large number of drugs, including carbapenems. And we're wondering what the mechanism of resistance is in your particular organism. So we can use our test then on the actual organism that we've grown from your blood to determine whether it carries, whether your organism carries KPC or NDM. Um, and we do that using PCR. The other way we can use the test is let's say that you're a patient who's coming to our hospital from an area that has a high prevalence of NDM positive Enterobacteriaceae or KPC positive Enterobacteriaceae. And I want to check you to see if you're carrying one of those organisms. So then what I can do is I can do a perianal or a rectal swab, very easy to collect, and I can run the PCR assay right off of that swab to determine whether you're carrying one of those organisms. We're actually picking up the genes for KPC and NDM but that's an indicator that you're carrying one of those organisms. If you happen to be carrying one of those organisms, then uh, I will know that, and, and then you can be uh, managed correctly, and we can also put you in appropriate isolation in the hospital so as to prevent transmission of your resistant organism to other patients in the hospital. Carbapenem resistant Enterobacteriaceae are relatively new uh, in the healthcare setting. Carbapenems are a group of antimicrobial agents that include drugs like meropenem, imipenem, and ertapenem. And traditionally, back not that long ago, they would be considered to be active against most gram-negative bacteria that we would run into in clinical practice. But today, unfortunately, we see some gram-negative bacilli, especially Enterobacteriaceae, which is one group of organisms that are resistant to these drugs. And obviously, that, that's a problem. So we have a drug that we could rely on in the past to be active against almost any of this type of organism, but today that's not necessarily the case. Now, there are multiple mechanisms by which bacteria can be resistant to these drugs. They can produce what is called a carbapenemase, which is an enzyme that breaks down carbapenems. It's a beta-lactam, if you've heard that term, uh, but it's a special type of beta-lactam that breaks down carbapenems. And when it does this, it also breaks down every other beta-lactam drug. So once organisms pick up a carbapenemase, they're most likely resistant to all other beta-lactams. And in fact, most of these organisms are multidrug resistant to other types of antibiotics as well outside of beta-lactams. Now, in the United States, there are two common types of carbapenemases, and they are called KPC and NDM. There are, however, other types of carbapenemases, both in the United States and elsewhere. What is KPC? KPC stands for Klebsiella pneumoniae carbapenemase. What is NDM? NDM stands for New Delhi metallobetalactamase. New Delhi metallobetalactamase, or NDM, is a little bit newer in the United States than is KPC, but we see both types of resistance. And when we see that kind of resistance, it's important to understand the type of resistance that we're dealing with to know what's going on in the individual patient and also to look at potential transmission in hospitals. Now, these types of bacteria that carry this type of resistance are typically found in our intestinal tracts as normal flora. And so we can carry them. And if you're just carrying one of these organisms, you will not know that you're carrying one of these organisms. If you become infected with it, for example, if you uh, develop a urinary tract infection or if you have some sort of intra-abdominal problem and you develop an infection maybe after a surgery or complicating diverticulitis or appendicitis, something of that nature, they can also cause infections. And then if you're in the hospital and you happen to be carrying one of these organisms, 
you can also really unknowingly transmit that organism to other patients in the hospital because since you're carrying them in your intestinal tract, they're in your stool, they get into the environment, and then they can be passed from one patient to another patient in the hospital. So it's important for us to know whether patients are carrying them or not so that we can put them in appropriate isolation to prevent transmission in the hospital. You might use this assay in a number of ways. Uh, many hospitals have uh, policies where they're screening certain patients for uh, carbapenemase producing Enterobacteriaceae. Uh, these might be patients coming from areas where they might be at risk for having picked up these organisms. And so this assay can be used on perianal or rectal swabs on such patients. Alternatively, a hospital might have a patient who has one of these organisms, who's infected with one of these organisms, and might be interested in doing surveillance testing of other patients who were on the same ward with that patient. And, and there again, you would use the uh, perianal or rectal swabs on those other patients to screen. Uh, alternatively, you might have an isolate, such as the example of the blood culture isolate, that is highly drug resistant and that is a suspect carbapenemase producing organism and you want to test for the mechanism. And so this assay will tell you whether it's a KPC producing organism or an NDM producing organism.